So joining me here now in Mission Control Houston, it's a real privilege. I have uh, our veteran flight director and our flight director for Orbit 2 for the week, Mr. Paul Dye. This is his final week as a flight director here at NASA. Paul, first off, I really want to thank you for coming on and talking to me for a little bit, sharing all your experiences with me today. Sure, Dan. It's great. So I want to jump right in. How has this last week felt? I mean, you're a flight director. You're a very integral part of the human space flight program. How has this last week felt so far? Well, it's it's actually been quite fun. Uh, you know, I was afraid that, uh, that it was going to be a little bit sadder than it has been, but uh, but the truth is that I've been very, very privileged to, to fly spacecraft for the United States for many, many years and uh, flew the entire shuttle program and now uh, finishing up with a station, and I did station as well, but, mm -hmm. uh, but finishing up dedicated to station the past year and a half has really been fun because I've been able to work with a lot of young folks and, and pass on a lot of things that were passed on to me by the early Apollo veterans. And so um, the, the week hasn't been as sad as I thought it might be. It's, been, it's actually been, been a lot of fun to just uh, to work with the flight controllers again. And we've been keeping it pretty light. We've been having the good, cool <laughs> dress codes this week. As you can see, today was the best day. We had an Apollo day yes, yesterday, we did. which is yeah, really we cool. Had, uh, we had a white shirt and skinny black tie day yesterday, just to remind people of where we come from and, and think about the history. And let's jump into your history really quick. Now, you started here as a student. And that's, the cooperative that, That's program. right. I came here as a uh, as a student uh, from the University of Minnesota back in my, uh, I guess it was my uh, junior year of college, after my junior year of college, and uh, didn't know what I was going to be doing. But it turned out that uh, that the operations group had uh, seen my resume, and, and I'd been flying. I was a commercial pilot when I was uh, young, and uh, I'd been in the uh, diving business when I was young in college. And they said, hey, here's a guy who knows operations, real-time operations. Let's snap him up. And so uh, I came here as a flight controller and, um, and uh, worked on some of the very earliest shuttle missions and uh, moved on to being a senior flight controller pretty quickly and then, uh, and then uh, was a flight controller for about a dozen years before I was selected as a flight director in 1993. And tell me a little bit about your experience as a flight controller. Now, when you are the flight director, you're overseeing every flight controller. You are the flight controller. <laughs> you're the hive brain. That's right. you. Yeah. How did your experience as just, you know, one of the one of the flight controllers here in the room, how did that really help you get to where you were? You know, there probably isn't any better leadership uh, school than mission control here in the front room. Um, and that, that's not just for flight directors, it's flight controllers as well, because every front room flight controller has a back room of flight controllers mm -hmm. that um, supports them. And so you have to lead your back room. You have to learn to trust your back room, just as the flight director needs to learn to trust his front room flight controllers. Yeah. You learn how the business works. Um, when we get selected as a flight director, we're, we're given basically a year of training. And people say, well, golly, you know, you learn to be a flight controller and, you know, and you, you learn to be a flight director in a year. And I said, no, I learned to be a flight, a flight director in 12 years as a flight controller, watching how flight directors worked and learning the spacecraft systems, not just learning the systems I was responsible for, but learning everybody else's systems. And that's what made me uh, qualified, like other flight directors, to be a flight director. We were looking outside of our own responsibilities to really look at the big picture. So really, really being part of a team yeah. and eventually leading yeah. the team. You've, you've got to be part of the team. I always I always joke around with flight controllers. It's not really a joke, but it's a, it's a thought experiment when I'm talking with thicker front room flight controllers mm -hmm. uh, in training. And I tell them that uh, sometime we're going to do a simulation where uh, just before we start the sim, I'm going to make everybody in the room switch consoles. <laughs> And the idea behind that thought experience is to, or experiment is to get them to think about what would terrify them the most, what console would terrify them the most. And I ask them that, and then I say, well, that's what you need to go study. I assume that if you've made it to the front room, you're already an expert on your own systems. Mm -hmm. What you need to learn is how to interface with everybody else. And that's what's really valuable. Now let's jump right into, you made it as a flight director. Now your very first mission, STS-63. That was a, a hallmark mission, really, in U.S.-Russian relations. That was the space shuttle, did a fly around and a rendezvous with Mir. Nowadays, you know, U.S. and Russian space agencies, that's an everyday thing. Right. What's it been like to really see the progression from that very first, you know, big partnership step to where we are today? Well, I'll tell you the story behind that was that it, it really, I started working with the Russians uh, before that in uh, 1992. We were, there was a there was a meeting between our president and their president, and they decided that we needed to work together better, and they, they thought maybe the space programs could do that. And so our agency head met with their agency head, and they said, you know, our president said we should do something together, so let's get some mm -hmm. experts together. And a very small team of Americans, myself included, went over to Russia, and we sat across the table from a, our counterparts in Russia, and we said, well, 
our government said we should work together. What 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 do you think we can do with each other in space? And um, and they said, well, we have this space station, but we don't have a shuttle. And you guys have a shuttle, but you don't have a space station. So maybe we can go visit each other. And that's where it came from. And um, and because I was working on that as a senior flight controller and got very deeply involved with that, uh, it it made me better prepared to be selected as a flight director. And lo and behold, I worked all of the shuttle Mir missions. We had a very small team of people who, who worked all the shuttle mirror missions because the Russians really like working with particular people, not with mm -hmm. a person in a it, with a title, but with a with they want to work with they Paul. Once they know Paul, they want to work with Paul. That the relationship's <laughs> important. So and, you became um, their go-to. That's right. And there was a small group of us that did that. So we worked a small group that did all those missions, and. And uh, there was a lot of, of time where we had to discover how how each was different, but but we really discovered that we were very very similar. And and I told you that you, when we were sitting across the table, you could point at a guy and say he looks like a ground controller. <laughs> that guy looks like an instrumentation officer. And sure yep. enough, that's what they were. That's just the way they worked is very similar to the way we we work. And and here today, when we work with them on a constant basis, we have Russians here and we have Americans over there, and we're constantly talking back and forth. Um, we work very naturally together. Okay, now let's jump to the end. You mm -hmm. were a flight director on the final shuttle mission, SDS-135. Right. Right. I want to see if you can go back to that day. How much did it mean to you to really be part of that, <laughs> flying it out, seeing the successful <clears throat> end of the space shuttle program? I think that, that, that uh, you have to understand that I'm basically an airplane guy. I grew up mm -hmm. uh, as a pilot in a you know, silk scarf and goggles and the like. And so to me, the, the space shuttle was the highest flying, fastest flying airplane ever built, and there's nothing about the shuttle that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time flying it in the simulators, uh, doing a lot of development work with the with the handling qualities and things like that. To see the program end was, was very tough, because we could have kept flying that bird for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about the standpoint of from engineering wise and operations wide we could have we could have kept flying that and it would have been nice here we we finished the station and it would have been nice to be able to continue carrying large yep. loads up and large loads back um, and so uh, that last shuttle mission was uh, was a little tough but the the great thing about it is that is that we flew it as professionals right to the very end um, we had people that were working on console that knew they were walking out the door when we landed mm -hmm. and they never let up not one iota until it was done. That's how much they cared about the program. And these teams always shown so much dedication, and it's always been very impressive. Now, before you were talking to me, flight directors think fast. Right. You describe that again, because that, <laughs> that was very cool. I think one of the hallmarks of flight directors, uh, either by, by selection or by training, is that we tend to think very, very fast. We think of contingencies, and we think of mm -hmm. multiple paths and multiple contingencies. And before we make a decision, we've probably gone very quickly through our mind of, if I do this, I can get this. If I do this, I go this. And if this happens, and this happens, and this happens. And, and that sometimes isn't apparent to other people. They just see us go, okay, we're going to do this. And then they ask us, well, have you thought about that? Have you thought about this? Have you thought, yes, I've thought about all that <laughs> stuff, and I know that this is what I want to do. Um, and that's probably one of the hallmarks of most of the people who've sat in the center seat here. So for all the flight controllers in this room that are maybe aspiring to someday become flight director and sit in your seat, what, mm -hmm. kind of, what, what advice would you give them? They've got to get outside of their own systems. They've got to think the big picture. They need to constantly be thinking about how they serve the overall mission. Mm -hmm. Our goal is two things, uh, flight safety and mission success. We want to make sure everybody comes home and we want to make sure we accomplish the mission. Yep. It doesn't do any good to, to accomplish the mission and people don't come home. So, so you got to do both those. Um, and in order to do that, you've got to understand all the systems. You have to understand, understand how they play together. You have to understand what the program wants and how the program needs to be accomplished. And today with a space station, you have to understand all of the international partners and how they contribute and how they work. Um, it's a vast program. And you can't do it without a great deal of help. Um, we, we sometimes describe flight directors as the as the uh, conductor of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am not a virtuoso on every <laughs> instrument. I may be able to make noise with most of the instruments, um, and one or two of them I can probably play for fairly well. But we have to depend on a big team, and, and you have to learn leadership and how to develop leadership, what leadership is. It's different than management. Um, leadership is about inspiration. It's about inspiring people to a vision. I can identify a leader in an instant by saying, what's your vision? And if they don't have one, then I know that they're not a leader. 
Uh, you have a vision, you make it so attractive to other people that they say, I got to go do that. And then the leader just needs to get out of their way and help provide them with the resources to get it done. Well, hopefully we have a few more leaders sitting here listening in that are going to take note. Uh, well, as, we as your, you know, as your time as a flight director is coming to an end, is there anything you're really, really going to remember from all the time you spent in this room <laughs> flying the shuttle? Is there anything that's really going to stand out? You know, people ask me that all the time, and the fundamental answer is I have had so many incredible moments doing what I've been allowed to do for, for 33 years mm -hmm. that there, it, it's impossible to pick them out. It would be like choosing between which is your favorite child. Um, we've just had so many incredible moments uh, from, from beginning to end. And sometimes you stop and you go, wow, I can't believe I've been allowed to do that. Uh, people who are really enamored by space and aeronautics and the like, but haven't been a given a chance to work here, would probably give just about anything to be involved to have been involved in some minor way with one shuttle mission. Mm -hmm. I flew 39 missions as a, spa as a shuttle flight director, nine of those as the lead. How can I possibly complain about anything? Mm -hmm. Everyone was a highlight. Well, it sounds like you certainly will be walking away with, you know, just as much as you put in, I hope. Oh, yeah. It, it's been an incredible experience. Any big plans for afterwards? Anything exciting you're looking well, forward to? Well, I've always been an airplane guy, and I'm going to continue being an airplane guy. I, I'm pretty deeply involved in experimental aviation, flying and building airplanes, and uh, helping to test airplanes and work on designs. Uh, I, I'm an advisor with the, uh, the Experimental Aircraft Association. Um, I'm uh, big into operations and safe flight testing and things like mm -hmm. that. So we have a lot of things to work on in that area, and, uh, and uh, flying is wonderful. All right. Well... Best of luck with that. You know, stay safe in the air. You certainly have a lot of experience with flying safe, so I have no doubt you'll continue to carry that on. Okay. Thank well, you very uh, much. Really want to thank you real quick, Paul, so much. It's Honestly, it's been a real privilege. Uh, it's been great sitting here with you and the team for your last week, and uh, it really it's been an honor. Okay. Well, thanks much. We'll Best see you tomorrow. Best of luck in the future. Okay. Bye-bye.